Well, Ulysses, one of our ethos going into spring training is health, health, health. Stay healthy and get to the regular season. And we're already being tested with that a little bit so far. Slightly tested. The room is not on fire yet, but let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sambrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. We do plan to have a mailbag episode later on this week. So send us those voice memos. We love those as well as uh, regular emails, questions, comments, concerns, hot takes, whatever it may be. All right, Ulysses. Um, we mentioned this briefly in our interview and discussion with Evan Klosky, but didn't really get a chance to dive into it more specifically. Uh, Josh Lowe uh, is being uh, shut down temporarily with hip inflammation. Um, basically, a week he will not be doing any baseball activities, and the expectation is that he will not re-enter a Grapefruit League game for the next 10 to 15 days. And if there is a setback uh, during that time frame, it could result in an injured list stint, making his uh, availability for opening day and beyond in question. So Josh Lowe, hip inflammation, go nuts, go crazy, freak out, light the world on fire. At least that's what I think some people are uh, generating, generating and, and garnering on social media these days. I think, honestly, the... Part of the freak out comes from wanting to be funny. Like, oh, no, this again. I think part of it is that. And the second part of it is I had somebody write to me when I was like, look, this, this seems like uh, people are overreacting about this whole Josh Lowe injury. Somebody came in with some something sensible on social media. I was like, huh, OK. He said um, or she said, I don't know. And they said. It's probably because we're coming in from hockey and football season. So when it somebody says hip inflammation and they're out 15 days, it's kind of like WTF. Oh, that's like, possible. Huh. Okay. You know, you, you come from a sport where 300-pound dudes are banging each other's heads with, with helmets and they play the next game the next right. week. And then hockey, I mean... The, they literally beat the pulp out of each other sometimes. Right. It's so uh, they're both very uh, violent <laughs> contact sports, unlike so, baseball. So, so maybe coming from hibernation of football and and hockey has something to do with that. But I, from from what I've read and what they've said, the fact that they said no, that he expects to to be available for opening day, I wouldn't put too much stock in it. It's it's you know a little bit worrisome, but. Um, these things are going to happen. I, I'm I'm not worried right now about Josh Lowe missing opening day. Scale of one to ten, what is your level of concern? Ten being, oh my gosh, he's not going to be available for the season. He's going to turn into Kevin Kiermeyer. One being, no, he'll he'll be good for opening day. Might take him a little bit of time to to get going, but uh, just expect a, a repeat of 2023 Josh Lowe or or more than that. I'm at a Two, two point okay. five, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, let's let's wait and see. I'm not I'm not gonna be too concerned right now, but I, obviously this would this would really, uh, you know, hamper the Rays' ability for offensive production. Um, oh, for and sure. then now, you know, we've talked about the outfield competition uh, last week. If you haven't checked out those series that we've been doing, uh, check them out. Uh, you know, you take Josh Lowe out of the field for let's say a month now you're gonna really feel it because your fourth outfielder we we agreed on being johnny deluca and then your fifth one is it richie palacios or is it somebody else is it Ahmed yeah. rosario with you know harold if he isn't traded like it's 
a lot of moving parts that you might not want to put on so many at bats right away. Right, for sure. Uh, we do have more to discuss on this Josh Lowe's injury and beyond other news and nuggets from spring training. But first, we have to tell you something very important, and that is this get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so, so, so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N to shoot your shot today. FanDuel, they are the official sports book partner of the NBA. Uh, Ulysses, a couple things there. Uh, I, I like the uh, comparison between baseball, football, and hockey. I thought some folks out there would be jaded or concerned because of Kevin Kiermeyer's past hip issues and inflammation, which ultimately led to surgery and uh, season-ending injury. And then uh, he went off to uh, the Blue Jays, but we should note that Josh Lowe is uh, notably significantly younger than uh, Kevin Kiermeyer. So there's that. And I don't think as prone to uh, injury either, but uh, there is something interesting to see how, if, and it may be somewhat of a big, if, if Josh Lowe is unavailable for opening day, how that does impact the first roster iteration I would think Johnny DeLuca absolutely has to be a lock. Like he is because yeah. he really is the only guy that would be able to cover center field if something happens to Siri or if Siri needs a breather. Because right now I think it's really Josh Lowe that that fills in uh and, and helps out Siri if there's a concern or issue there. And then beyond that, I guess some of the question is how well Ahmed Rosario takes to handling the corner outfield defensively if he can't handle it whatsoever that may be opening up a lane for palacios but if he's good if he's serviceable if the rays are okay with uh plugging him in at left field right field wherever he's needed then that could open up an avenue for one of these uh infield prospects i.e you know jonathan aranda curtis mead whoever else yeah, and that's why Johnny DeLuca is so valuable uh, to this team oh, yeah. because, you know, he will get the big brunt of at-bats uh, if something happens in the outfield, uh, especially in the in, the, in center field because even though Josh Lowe did come up as a center fielder, you know, it it, it does seem like it's a little bit too big He's for him. He's not really time. a primary center fielder. He shouldn't be playing, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 games in center. Right field, no. I love. I love what it, he can do in right field. His arm strength, being able to throw out a runner at third, coming in on uh, a shallow fly ball, he's really good at that stuff. But there yeah. is a difference between playing left field, right field, center field, whatever it is. I think with Josh Lowe, I'm I'm to the point of, if you can exclusively keep him at right field, and if you can exclusively keep him in the lineup against most lefties and all righties. Said it. Know. Yeah, set it and forget it for Josh Lowe at right field. Like that's that's the way that I think we sh we we both think uh, on Josh Lowe says uh, for the 2024 season. But yeah, yeah, uh, he uh, he he used to be a center fielder. He's not anymore. He doesn't have to be. So if if it comes to a point like oh we have a spot start here and there maybe, uh, but that's Johnny DeLuca. I think that they're trying to get for that spot. So if Josh Lowe is not available, Johnny DeLuca should be able to step up in there and. I, you know, th this is why depth is so important. And, and you're like wondering like, oh man, is there a, a glut in the infield or something like that? Or in the outfield, like get as many bodies as you can get as many right. bodies as you can, because the, the issue is when you lose one piece, you don't want the, the next piece up to just drop in so much value in so much offensive production and so much mm -hmm. defensive flyability or, or what, whatever may have you like, that's why. You know, for example, Yu Chang, we haven't talked about him. He got injured. Like, yeah. that's part and of a your more death. severe, serious injury than Josh Lowe because Chang's got an oblique strain and he's going to miss six to eight weeks. That's and the that happened on a swing. Training. That's the thing is like anything crazy things happen in spring training where you're just not loose and not ready and just 
a run of the mill swing and you're down for the count. Unfortunately, just a swing and Dunedin, and boom, I'm gonna miss the rest of spring training. That's that's a tough break for you, Chang. Uh, I, I am guessing though, however, that they'll they'll probably yeah um, keep him in, in the organization. And look, I mean, I don't think he was a contender to make the opening day roster, but it's still good to have that in case of uh, you know crazy circumstances prevail. Yeah, good depth. So that's why it is important to have it in, in there. And, and I think the, the raise in the outfield should be fine. You know, Ahmed Rosario in the corners, a uh, Harold, if he's not traded, you got Richie Palacios before them and then Johnny DeLuca. So I think you, you should be fine. Yeah. I don't think this is a, a, a big uh, issue right now. Right. And, and maybe the Rays also say, Hey, we're going to hold on to Harold Ramirez until we're really sure yeah. about Josh Lowe. And again, I, I'm not surprising here. I want Josh Lowe to be healthy for the course of the regular season because I want him to build off of what he did in 2023 yes. and see how he can elevate his game. You know, I know we've we've mentioned that we haven't really touched a bunch on the valuability and how just amazing of a season Josh Lowe had last year. Like he is legitimately a five tool player. Yeah. And there's so many things to like about his game. And really, he might just have to put up another season like he did last year, this season, and maybe another good half year before we're having that conversation of best right fielder in Ray's history. Because it's not like an incredibly lengthy list. You've got, you know, I mean, we can talk about Matt Joyce and Steven Souza and Austin Meadows, but beyond that, there's he he could be up there. He could really establish himself as um, the old timer at that position. Yeah, I mean, and and you know, I didn't know where you were going with this, but I think that's a probably around the the time span that it would take for us to be like, okay, he's our best center, our best right fielder yeah. ever this whole season, and then probably half of next season, just like yeah. this type of production, then we would be like, yeah, this is it. So I'm. Look, I, I know that platooning has served the race uh, very well. It makes mm-hmm. sense. But when you have a guy that is platoon proof, that means it, that just means he's really good. And yeah. so I want more of those guys that are really good. And so I think Josh Lowe has the talent to become an everyday uh, guy with the race. Yeah. And what does an everyday guy with the race mean? Well, no, it's not going to mean a 162, but it could mean it's be 140, 135, 140, 140. Yeah. No, so no. that's that's valuable still. So hopefully he can do that. We're all rooting for him. Uh, but no, he should. He's an exciting player. And you say five tool uh, player, six tool, uh, actually, because oh, of the tool. charisma and energy. My and goodness, this guy is a ham. He's like Kevin Kermar, you know, yeah. good looking guy, does not shy away from the cameras, fan favorite. People love him. Yeah, it's almost a six seven tool is uh, the charisma and, and good looks and, and all that. And I mean, if, if you just look at his profile, I mean, there's a chance that uh, I probably wouldn't have said this when thou who shall not be named was on the roster. But Josh Lowe could lead the team in war this yeah. season or in a year within the next couple seasons. Like, I don't think it's that far off base to say that. I based was on say, um, what he provides uh, across the board. And like, let's remember at his young age in a rookie season, more or less last year, like, and, and I just wanted to look this up and confirm every type of pitch, fastball, breaking ball, off speed. He was consistently really amazing across the board, <laughs> hitting 296, 286, 291 versus those types of pitches where awesome. a lot of times you have a guy that, yeah, he can hit, you know, 320, 330 versus fastballs, but he's a 190 hitter versus breaking balls. Not with Josh Lowe. And he's got the the power and the gap to gap to all fields. And he hits, I mean, something that I just looked up in the highlights is just the differentiation of the types of balls that he hits and elevates. Like he can hit a line drive homer to right center, and then he can hit a moonshot to center field at Fenway Park. Like yeah. that's just that's an amazing, amazing feat. And again, we hope the hip is okay because he generates a lot of torque and movement from his lower body. 
and it's just letting the the hands and the arms come through after that to make it a short, compact, seamless swing. So it, it, power to all fields, and he did feel the little bit of a of the hip bothering him during the off season, which is kind of you know a little bit like okay, so this has been going on for a while. So right, um, hopefully they know how to nurse it. You know, he's going to be able to nurse it better with the training staff than in the off season. You know, I think he got engaged or something. Uh, yeah. During the off season. So you know. It's a little bit of a different vibe when that happens in the offseason than when you're back in camp. But um, you mentioned uh, he who must not be named. And then something came up. I was like, you know what? Is Josh Lowe? And you said, oh, he can he can lead the team in war. Josh Lowe could also be the face of the franchise it if you be. let him. If you yeah. let him get hot in the field because dude's already hot. Hey, guess what? His uh, His mug... Uh, could be in a lot of posters. Yeah. It could be in a lot of billboards in Tampa and St. Pete. Like you could use uh, Josh Lowe in a way that you probably could have used Kevin Kiermaier even more in 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 his time, 2014, 2015, to kind of like amp up uh, oh, the sure. marketing for the Rays. You could do that with Josh Lowe. Oh, 100%. And he would fit the bill because Yandy's not getting any younger. Right. Randy's a Scott Boris client. Uh, mm-hmm. Brandon Lau can't stay on the field or perform in the playoffs. Isak, the Rays may sell high, and he's not really that uh, camera camera ready dude. He's does, he doesn't yeah. really like. I feel like Josh Lowe will do the bits and do the interviews, and he'll he'll be all about that. Even, so I think he could really really be a a prime candidate for doing that. And Josh Lowe doesn't have because of of being you know young in the league and and you know that that actually has to do a lot with the, the factor but he doesn't have like a stain on him yet you yeah. know you, you you mentioned so many stains on on a, on, a, on a couple players on why maybe they they wouldn't be good for that Josh Lowe doesn't have a stain I mean no. again major factors because he's young in the league but all right now Ray's fandom is happy about Josh Lowe they are they're they're, they're, they're glad that he's a race right. so like right now there isn't like a, a detractor for for Josh Lowe yet so you could really uh help out uh, your your butts in the seats situation if you make Josh Lowe your poster boy. Low landing. Ooh. Low loge. I don't know. Something in, in right field. Low, Lowe's landing? Like with, uh, you, you get Lowe's a little lodge. bit of a... Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know it's okay. kind of a, just basically copying and pasting what you did with Randy, but... Yeah, whatever. Point, you, gotta, you gotta think about something with this guy. Yeah. So. I'm in. All right. Um, we do have uh, more to discuss, Ulysses, but uh, first we have to tell the audience about something very important. Well, you know, this season, uh, low landing might happen, might not happen. But if it does, and if it doesn't, you got to use Game Time to get your tickets to go to the Trop because Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. It's sort of like the same peace of mind that you have when Josh Lowe is in the lineup. You're like, mm-hmm. oh. This is a good day. Everything's going to be fine. That's exactly the time of the type of mood that you're in when you use game time. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. In fact, they have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute seats. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets today with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code LOCKED on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Uh, Before we get into uh, Brennan McKay seeing action for the first time in uh, 87 years, uh, it's amazing (laughs) feat, I should say. Uh, I did pull up an article, uh, I guess it was during the pandemic where uh, you really had to claw for content uh, he put up an article when he was still working for uh, the Rays and mlb.com of the best right fielders in Rays franchise history and the list was steven souza one austin meadows two matt joyce three ben grieve four will myers five and then honorable mentions johnny gomes gabe kapler dave martinez and gabe gross yeah, so um, it's not like you're having to uh, claw through legend after legend to to take the mantle of a top right fielder in, in race franchise history. Just saying. 
2024, 2025, just like he just did. He's the best easy, right fielder easy peasy, we've, ever, yeah. we've ever had. Like, I mean, like, hands down. I think he already has probably put himself in the top 10, you know, right. like after a yeah. season. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So and I would just love to see him. I mean, I, I don't know how feasible it is, but have a uh, Matt Joyce like, I don't want to say arc, but tenure with the Rays 2019 to 2014. Like, give us a good five, six years yes. in a Rays uniform. Oh, get, us, be- get us to your free agency. That'd be yeah, nice. you know what? Sign something like uh, Brandon Lau. You know, get get yourself yeah. you know fit situated. Maybe obviously more money, but get yourself situated. Get yourself in a happy uh, situation where you're like, you know what? I want to stay here. Just kind of like Brendan McKay. Sign with the Rays and sign with the Rays because he got injured and he got yes. injured. But guess what? <laughs> Not anymore. Dude was on the mound. He shoved. And Kevin, I really like what. They had to say both him and Cash after the game. Yes. Um, and uh, I did not see the clippings, but uh, I heard that uh, he was hitting 90, 91 and throwing a couple of curveballs as well. 16 pitch inning in which he uh, struck out two and walked one in a 3 2 loss to Boston. But um, I know it, you know, it's probably not going to be on the, the front of the New York Post or the Tampa Bay Times or anything like that. But Let's just think about what type of moment this is for a guy like this and the organization. He had Labrum in August of 2020. He had Thoracic Outlet in November of 2021 and Tommy John in September 2022. Plus the pressure of being a Rays number one draft pick and being compared or talked about as he's the American version of Shohei Otani. And it hasn't quite um, worked out all that well for him due to injury and so forth you you list all those injuries and it's like man that is rough like a back to back to back years of just not feeling good at all so finally he's on the mount he said he had happy nerves uh which which you know that's that's such a good uh quote happy nerves i like that uh he he said he liked what he showed but just got to get things a little bit more tight um but what interested me the most was Cash's comment saying that he asked Brendan after he got off the mound, do you feel like you're kind of ready to getting turned now? That's the quote. Do you feel good to kind of just getting turned now? To which Brendan replied, yeah, I think so. Get in turn now. That made me think. Blame me for putting on my tinfoil hat on. But does does this kind of is there a scenario, Kevin? Are you saying are you suggesting that he's going to make the opening day roster? Is there a scenario where Brendan McKay breaks out with the team? May it be because of they're trying a six man rotation or because they say, you know what, Tosh, you can go down to triple A with Uwasawa to start off. We're going to see what Brendan McKay can give us. Like, is, is that a possibility? as we're recording this very early on March 4th? Uh, No, I don't think it is. I think he's going to have to get some run, get some action in the minor leagues. I just think there's too much depth already, um, particularly in the bullpen and the rotation to me seems more or less set. I know we still have to have our episodes on what the rotation is going to look like, what the Mm -hmm. uh, relief core is going to look like and uh, catching as well. We still got to do those positional preview episodes, but I think that they want him to uh, settle in and and get some legit work. Cause I, I still don't think he's, I don't think he's at the level that he needs to be to pitch in the majors as of yet. But having said that, I do think that he will get action in a major league game this season. I just don't think it's going to be late March or April. It might be June or July or August. I mean, we go back in the history, look at how many different pitchers that the Rays have used year in and year out. Yeah. I mean, every year they're using, I mean, basically not pitchers per se, but you know, 60, 65 players and how many guys have gotten an appearance and then they're DFA the next day. Not saying that's going to happen with, uh, with McKay, but just, a lot of guys get an opportunity for a third of an inning or one inning or two innings or five innings. And I think Brendan McKay will eventually get that shot, whether it's in a, a real meaningful game or, uh, or uh, a blowout or something like that. I do think he'll, he'll see time in a raised uniform this season, 
but I I think they want to build them up uh, cautiously, correctly, and properly before they get to that point. I think so, but I just I feel like on March third or second when he's pitching, and they're saying get in turn now, and on in front of the cameras, like seems like they barring injury, like they are they're okay with pushing him a little bit and, and like you know seeing what he can, can right he can get you on the mound and when you're putting him in turn i just i i like that quote i like that quote a lot because it it, it says that you know he's finally feeling good um they're they're ready to put some you know not pressure but like put some hey we want you to be this kind of guy. I, I wouldn't put it out of mind. And, you know, for example, if we, you say, take it easy and, and, and slowly progression, which obviously, if, of course, it makes sense when we just listed yeah. all of those injuries back to back to back years. But, you know, who's also taking it easy uh, and, 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 and a gradual uh, ascent to, to the MLB is Shane Boz. And, and he hasn't seen any, type of mm. of of showing in spring training and he won't he actually will already uh, be i think getting some uh looks in late uh ex- extended spring training so after the season starts maybe he'll get on the mound and actually face hitters so i uh, th- there's a different way like he's not in the bass uh path of like maybe making it like late may early june right. like He's with the other guy. So I don't know. It just it just spoke to me the way that Cash was able to be so honest um, about, you know, they are going. I think they're counting on McKay, like, yeah, not not counting like you're going to be our guy, like you're, uh, mm-hmm. you know, make 30 starts sort of guy. But like they're counting on getting production from McKay. And I'm just asking, which, which is great. I mean, it's ready. a good like, yeah, it's a good motivating factor for him of like, hey, we we have faith in you. We're not just going to, you know put you out to pasture and pitch in Durham all year. Like we do have expectations for you. So I think that's a good thing. I just, let me see a, another couple appearances from McKay yeah. in spring training before I make that determination. I'll say this. Yeah. If he has another crazy pitching injury, I I'm just, I'm getting to the point where, Hey, hang up the arm, pick up the bat and, and start hitting, you know, one more start, injury start working that on that lefty stroke. Because you're getting to the point where you're having so many injuries that you're losing count of them, which isn't a good sign for a pitcher. And you yeah. you get into that dangerous territory, you know, whether you qualify a guy because he's injury prone of being a bust. But we would just add him. We would have to add him to the list of uh, just another number one pick that went to waste because there's a been a lot of those in the Rays organization over the last you know decade plus yeah definitely definitely so yeah sending the best of uh vibes and, and luck to to brennan mckay i i i know i'm bullish uh and i and i recognize that but i think it'd be such a cool a great story to to have him just break out with the team i mean that that would be so unreal i mean for for his path uh that he's suffered so much in the last three Here and we- a half years here we go. Let's have him be the uh, opener of the first game of the season. So he's technically the starter, technically the opening day starter. You have him pitch one inning, you take him out, and you throw Eflin in after that. How nice. about that for a moment? Let's go. Like that. No, that's great. Uh, I think one more injury, I would do the same thing with you, like uh, yeah. uh, that you're saying. One more injury to the arm, bro. Let's yeah. Let's let's work on that uppercut lumber. Yeah. 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 Work on that uppercut, work at first base, work at DH and be that type of guy going forward. So, all right. Um, hope you all enjoyed this episode. We have much more coming up this week. In the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you tomorrow.